<laughs> it's your boy Crypto Blood, and welcome to another episode of My Two Satoshis. It is July 29, 2019. Shout out to my man Litecoin Moses for this one. This is probably the funniest song request I've had. Like, literally. He said, play some Bloods, Pyru Love. He said, I thought it would be fitting for this channel. That is hilarious, man. Thanks for the song request. This is off of that Banging on Wax album and actually i think this is like a compilation of crips and blood songs that they put together i can't remember what album this actual song comes off of but pyru love shout out to all those pyrus out there treetops free towns mobs all y'all out there it's crip love too man i love y'all all but what's good people hope you guys are doing well welcome to another episode today we are going to look at uh what's happening with this new york case bitfinex ifinex a parent company Going at it with the New York Attorney General's office, there are some updates. I was going to talk about the the actual court date that was going on today. I didn't know what time, but as I was setting up for the video, I actually saw some news come across. So we'll take a look at uh, what updates we have from that. And the second article, remember Kick ICO? I know many of you do if you follow Cliff High and the WebBob reports and stuff. So they've got a new system or platform called Kick Ecosystem. I think this article is actually a PR article, so it is marketing material from them, but it caught my attention because I haven't heard much about Kick in a long time. And I want to take a look at what's going on with this new ecosystem they're launching. Whatever happened to KickICO.com and that ICO platform? Ah, I don't know. This stuff is confusing people. And then lastly, out of Coindesk, we've got Tether Stablecoins launching on Blockstream's Liquid Network sidechain. I think this is liquid network is actually the lightning network so this is interesting to see we'll take a look at the details on this here in a second as well but first let's check out this heat map for today we're looking like a flat line day as far as it goes right now we had some stop loss hunting going on yesterday we'll take a look at that in a minute but bitcoin is up 0.1 percent to 9539 dollars Ethereum is up 1% to $210.40. Litecoin up just over a half percent to $90.50. Remember, this uh, halving is occurring next week. We got less than a week left. Just to keep you guys up to date with that, EOS is at $4.18, down 2.2%. Binance is also down 1.4% to $27.24 and the seven day performance looks very similar to my last video Bitcoin down 7.5 percent still Ethereum down 3.2 percent EOS is up 1.5 percent in the last seven days Litecoin down 4.9 percent and Bitcoin SV down 11 percent but Tron taking the most heat down 17%. So if you take a look at the chart for today, as you can see, we've broken uh, out of the channel downward. But if you look here, this was the uh, candle I was talking about referring to the stop loss hunting that went on yesterday. Big stop loss hunt right here. Took out both sides. If you were long, you got stopped out. If you were short, you got stopped out with the wick above it. So um, this normally, this is the stop hunt on the short side, and this is the stop hunt on the down side. But if you take a look here, this one is longer than that one up there. To me, this means that the market is going to go in the opposite way of the stop loss hunt, the biggest one. So seeing that the, the whales or exchanges or whatever stopped out everyone that was long, makes me think that we're going to head higher here that's what the market likes to do it likes to get everyone out and then head in the direction a lot of people thought it would <laughs> this is how it's cruel i know that's my analysis on that and i can actually extend this channel line out a little bit and extend this one out too so that's pretty much where we are we st we are still below the channel but again i think with this stop loss hunt that we had yesterday lends me to believe that we are heading higher from here so we'll just have to see what happens though but up i think we go so the first article is about this kick ico uh new system they call a uh, kick ecosystem uh again i think this is a press release but it just made me think about kick ico because i hadn't heard anything really about it in a long time and this caught my attention so i wanted to bring it to your attention it says here kick ico one of the largest crypto crowdfunding platforms is finalizing the launch of its own ecosystem 
named Kicked Ecosystem. It will serve as a one-stop solution for the crypto community based on two fundamental functionalities, fundraising and an exchange ecosystem. It aims to make cryptocurrency fundraising fair and trading clear, transparent and comprehensive for the public and security regulators in various countries. The ecosystem will introduce an innovative auction-based AIO fundraising model, the next step up from ICOs and IEOs, like we need anything else here, people. <laughs> there will also be an STO token sale option, along with the new KickX exchange starting in the third quarter of 2019, with more services to come. So it goes on to say that this new ecosystem includes a cryptocurrency exchange solution they call KickX, which is the first product line to be launched in the third quarter of this year, with some of the lowest trading fees and one of the most profitable affiliate programs. Kick X will be followed by a white label token sales solution called KickDesk, a unified login system called KickID, a multi currency wallet called Kick Wallet, a crypto payment gateway called KickPay, and an ad network integration called KickCPA, a multi level referral network called KickRef, and a comprehensive app called Kick Mobile. It's just too much kicking going on here, people. <laughs> it's too much. I think they kind of wore that whole nomenclature out there. The fuel running this entire ecosystem is the Kick token, which will be enhanced to serve the new use cases in the ever growing Kick economy. It also includes the Kex token, which operates on the Kick X exchange. This is just too much. My whole thing is like, what happened to kickico.com? Uh, you know, it used to be a very promising idea. I was really excited about it. You know, a lot of hype came from, of course, the Cliff High Bare Naked Wealth reports on it. I don't know, man. I don't know what happened. The last campaign that finished, the last two looks like June 1st for this one and June 1st for this one as well. I mean, this one only raised three ETH and the others didn't raise anything. So I'm not too sure what's going on here. Are they just going to abandon this concept or this brand and go with the new one, Kick? ecosystem which is uh i don't know man you guys let me know your thoughts about this the latest campaigns i only see three here and not not much activity going on on the website and i haven't even looked at the token in some time so the token is a tenth of a penny now i think i sold this thing at like nine cents somewhere around there so yeah i don't know man it has lost a ton of value a ton of value can you believe this thing was once at 15 cents this is this crazy it's now a tenth of a penny so we'll see what happens if this will revitalize the kick token let me know if you guys still hold any of those give me your feedback in the comments below an article that i was going to talk about initially was just asking the question whether or not this was the d-day for bifnex and how it would affect the markets well as i was setting up as i told you at the beginning the judge rules to extend Bifinex and Ifinex case in New York. So a non-event pretty much. It says Justice Joel Cohen of the New York Supreme Court has ruled to extend the preliminary injunction in the ongoing case of crypto exchange Bifinex and Tether's parent company Ifinex against the New York Attorney General's office. Cohen reportedly decided to give a 90 day extension to the case, which apparently means that OAG can continue its investigation. Lawyers of Tethers tried to appeal to dismiss the motion immediately, but Cohen rejected their appeal. Speaking before the court, Ifinex also argued that the court does not have subject matter jurisdiction because Tether is not a security or a commodity as there is no futures market. The company's defense also stressed that Tether and Bifinex are two different companies with two different business models and that it is not proper to treat them as a single entity so we'll have to see what happens with this kick the can down the road that's what governments like to do so we're going to kick it another 90 days and we'll see what happens from here but i just wanted to give you guys that update looks like a non-event for today's judgment day for bifinex and the last article it may be something uh to be excited about for those who are very bullish on the lightning network tether Stablecoin launches on Blockstream's Liquid Network sidechain. It says a new version of the widely used but controversial stablecoin USDT is launching on Blockstream's Liquid Network. Announced Monday, the addition of the token to Liquid's Bitcoin sidechain network launched last October will offer Bitcoin traders and companies new features that are not available via Tether's LTD's original platform, which is the Omni layer 
on the Bitcoin network. Liquid was designed as an additional layer to the Bitcoin blockchain to offer the ability to transact large volumes of transactions at a larger speed. At launch, a number of industry firms, including Tether's sister firm Bifinex, had already signed up to help manage and transact with the network using its Bitcoin peg token LBTC. With Tether entering the network, it will now be possible to make atomic swaps between Liquid BTC and Liquid Tethers, a feature that the firms say will offer low counterparty risk for those carrying out OTC trades. Furthermore, Liquid's faster block times will allow traders to quickly complete transactions of fiat between exchanges, making more efficient arbitrage trading. As far as storing assets goes, Blockstream Green, the firm's wallet offering, will allow holders to store Liquid USDT when idle and move them to exchanges when trading. The wallet app was revamped in March to offer new features including multi-signature security and privacy over the Tor network. Previously a Bitcoin wallet, Green was updated earlier in July to support liquid Bitcoin and issued assets. And also says that the press release suggested that Trezor Hard Wallet will soon support these assets. So it also says with the launch, liquid USDT will be supported for deposits and withdrawals at Bifinex while liquid member firms are working to add the token according to the press release. So let me know, this is uh, positive news for sure for more adoption and to add liquidity to the Liquid Network, no pun intended there. But uh, this is a good move. I'm still not convinced of you know, the side chains of Bitcoin and make it faster. You guys let me know your thoughts on this Tether stablecoin launching on Liquid Network side chain though. And I told you that Tether actually launched on Algorand's blockchain as well so that's good for them and i think algorand is a sleeper so check them out if you already haven't but that's pretty much it for today ladies and gents thanks for joining me today i know it's monday back into the swing of things i know litecoin moses thank you for that song request though pyru love make sure you guys give me some love by hitting that thumbs up and clicking that bell and sharing this video that's my two satoshis for july 29th 2019 i'm out of here people Holla. Come on.